been 20 years of trying and 20 years of frustration. But here we are. It's time for uh, time for the Monaco Grand Prix, folks. Huh. We we've been trying so long. It's unbelievable. Race is going to be dry, so that's uh, good. You can't even see the development options. They're, look at them; they're they're all so high up there somewhere. You can hardly see them. Uh, so. We did get uh, some good stuff this weekend. We got our two aero upgrade. We got a chassis upgrade there. So now we're third worst chassis. Yay, third worst. Uh. <laughs> Hard to believe that we're almost beating Ferrari and Mercedes in the chassis department. We really are almost beating Mercedes and Ferrari in the chassis department. That's... Uh, that's a miracle in itself. So it just leaves uh, a major and ultimate. We got our um, two aero upgrades. One that we should have got for Spain, and the other one that we uh, we took there. So it looks like it's the aero we've got to work on. But uh, let's take a look at your championship. So we're leading uh, from Charles Leclerc. Sergio Perez, uh, Daniel Ricciardo, Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, uh, Fernando Alonso, Sebastian Vettel, Lance Stroll, Sergei Sorokin. Round out your top ten. We've, uh, we've only got a race victory over Charles Leclerc, which is good. And uh, still scoring a goose egg. Grosjean, Sainz, Gasly and Hulkenberg. There we go. Two victories on the season with this uh, hunk of junk. Two victories. <laughs> can, can you believe that? On 105, I've taken this hunger junk. To, to thingy. But anyway, we're going to get practiced, then get qualified. It's time to race, folks. Try and win a Monaco Grand Prix. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That was how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean Sea. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. The prestigious Circuit de Monaco then. It's not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk about Paul. What do you make of their performance so far this season? They've been avoiding mistakes and have had solid pace, so it's been a good season so far, but whether they can keep that up long term remains to be seen. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Paul lines up on pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Perez, Charles Leclerc and Raikkonen, Hamilton, Ericsson, Stroll and Sebastian Vettel, Ocon. Grosjean, Pierre Gasly and Bottas, Sirotkin, Sainz, Kevin Magnussen and Stoffel van Dorn, Holkenberg and Fernando Alonso starts from the back of the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. OK, it's a short run to Sandevot, and you know what Monaco's like to so try to defend this lead. <laughs> yes. 20 years of trying. 20 years of frustration and we ended up with pole position we just put the foot to the floor and went for it so one stop today it will be five laps on the hyper soft and then the rest of the race on the ultra soft not gonna be easy to win around monaco but uh we're gonna give it a go and we're gonna try it so let's get out there let's do this so here we go 20 laps around this hellhole. Five red lights are out and it's up lights out. Away we go. And it's actually a great start from Max Verstappen. It looks like Verstappen's going to get the lead. Oh, oh great. If he is, well, we're going to have a fight it up to uh, Massenet. 
Come on. We've got to get ahead of Verstappen and Massa through Casino Square. Oh, a bit of contact there, but uh, oh no. That is not the result we wanted. It looks like Max Verstappen has taken the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. And we are going to be struggling from here on in. That wasn't a good start. We need to be ahead of Max Verstappen. Because those Red Bull around Monaco, they are the dogs you know what. Oh, well. we just got to settle in and we got to hope we get uh, lucky somehow. As we give it everything through the Nouvelle Chicane. Now coming up to uh, the back corner. To back ease off the throttle, absolutely power it through and then through into the swimming pool section. Oh, big clunk on the curves there. And another big clunk on the curves, we go to uh, to back. And it's going to be, no, so that's the, the Rascas. And then uh, enter Anthony Nogue. Ooh, one lap down, 19 to go. That's all you can say, really, about uh, this circuit as we come through to start. Lap number two, through Santalot. And now on the run up to Massenet. See, we're keeping the okay, staff. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a lot of power. We're keeping Verstappen honest. And if we can stay with him, we might be able to work an undercut on the on the pit stops. That's what we gotta hope. We've gotta hope we get an undercut. Because if we uh, if we don't get the undercut, then we're not gonna win this race. That is what we are most need to concentrate on. We need to concentrate on winning this race as we go back to... Now this would be... Who is this? Is that my man Gasly? Oh no, that's uh, that's me. <laughs> so he, actually you see about it, it's all into the wall on the outside to back as we go back to Kevin Magnussen. He's currently in uh, P15. Um, and spoiler alert, it's Monaco. There's going to be practically zero passes. Uh, if there's any passes uh, for the lead, any passes at all around the circuit, I will be very, very, very surprised. But um, it's all we can do as we uh, start, come on to lap number three now. Up uh, the hill out of Sandovart, into Massenet. You see, he's still um, not too far in front of us. We've got Daniel Ricciardo on our rear as well. So it's a Red Bull 1 2 3, if you think about it. Because, ooh, a bit wide into Mass into, uh... Yeah, that's Massenet. No. I've got my corners confused here at, um... Monaco. It's good. I know, that's Poitiers. And that's, uh, that's the tunnel. Well, who's this out of the back of? I forgot that. This is out of the back of Daniel Ricciardo in P3. Hmm. And that's the... Ooh, did we cut the chicane there? No, I think we're all right. I think uh, I think we're going to get away with that one. Out of uh, out the back. Now through. Ooh, big, big slide out of the back. Ooh, that was a cut. There's my man Gasly. The Gaz man. He's in P12 at the moment. So not too bad. You know, someone, uh, one of my group of criticised me for being a second faster than my teammate. Well, it's not my fault my teammate's slow. Screw him. As we uh, start lap number four. DRS has been enabled, but uh, DRS around uh, Monaco is about as useful as a chocolate fire guard. It's uh, not very, uh, not very useful at all. As we uh, go with uh, the ride with Verstappen for a little bit now, is it going to be? Well, Verstappen's the race leader, isn't he? I'm sure that's Mass. No, that's Mirabeau. Yeah, that's Mirabeau. Oh, is Mirabeau the corner before the Casino Square? No, I'm sure Mirabeau is before the Casino Square. I don't know. Oh, uh, so now to uh, Sergio Perez. He's a uh, P6. So, uh, Force India's are not having a... You remember the Force India, the most powerful engine uh, in the world as we go with my ex-teammate Lance Stroll? He's down in uh, P9, so speaking of cars that are struggling. Here's a, here's a prime example of a car struggling. See, we leave and uh, all of a sudden Williams becomes garbage as we start. Pit window open. open. Let's box Let's this box lap. lap. You know, it, it, staring at the back of this red ball, I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking, that could be me. That could be me next season. You know, if Daniel, 
with Daniel Ricciardo leaving me and Verstappen as uh, the top two as we go to. Who is that? Is that Van Dorn? Uh, no, that is actually Alonso. That is Fernando Alonso and he's last. And for some reason he's last and woefully off the pace. Ah, I see why. He's got wing damage, it looks like. I, I thought I saw some uh, damage to his wing. I could be uh, could be wrong. We'll, uh, we'll go check that out as we go into the new Belgian game. Ooh, we got so close to that wall. You you look at my face and... Well, there's... Um, who's this? He's Marcus Ericsson. So he's down in P... Where's Ericsson? P8. P8 on our running sheet. And uh, here we go. Oh, right. So we've decided to come in a lap early. Okay. So, undercut time. As I, as I said before, you may see a concerned look on my face. It's because we have been trying so long to win a Monaco Grand Prix at F1 2015. Couldn't do it. 2016. Couldn't do it. 2017. Couldn't do it. Oh, these are, I should mention, these are on Korea. Couldn't do it in Korea. We could do it in quick play, we could do it in that, but we just couldn't apply it when it came to Korea. <coughs> that's uh, that's the one thing we uh, we always concerned about as we look at Esteban Ocon. He's now in uh, P8. <coughs> and uh, we're getting a bit of a we're getting a bit of a rope problem there. That's what happened when we called too many races in one go. See, it, oh look at this, we've gone to the lovely overhead shot here. That is so nice. I've always wondered helicopter shots around Monaco. Well, here you go. That is beautiful. As we go to the race leader, Daniel... No, it's Max Verstappen, sorry. And then he's coming in. <coughs> so. I was going to come in the same lap as Verstappen. So we're going to attempt an undercut on Verstappen here. Off the... Come the oh, we have to wait there for one of the Saubers. I assume that's Ericsson. Yeah, it is Ericsson. So now, where are we in... Uh, in, well, there's we are. We're coming up to uh, pa Stoffel Van Dorn. In fact, there we are. Oh, wait, this could be close. Uh, Sam de Vaart. That's going very close. We've passed Van Dorn. Oh, but we're stuck behind Verstappen. Oh, that is frustrating. That is absolutely frustrating. Oh, I thought we were going to have it then. We may, we may still do, actually. He's being held up by Holcomb. Go on. <coughs> Excuse me. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Into the race lead. Well, it will be the de facto race lead when uh, everyone stops. But thank you very much. This might mean we get past Ricardo, As we see Alonso finally coming into the pits. Alonso coming into the pits. Big time. This, uh, this should be to replace his wing. There, there it is. You have to replace that wing somehow. Look at them. How strong do you have to be to lift one of them wings? And I know it's a computer game and all, but that's got to be some strength. So he comes out of the pits now. Still last. Bless his, uh, bless his cotton socks. He's got a new wing now, so he should be, uh, he'd be mega fast. As we go to the race leader, Daniel Ricciardo. Will he be pitting this lap? Yes, he will. So let's see if he get. I want to see if he gets uh, held up as uh, much as Verstappen got held up. So there we go. No, he's gonna be uh, well clear. Yeah, look at that seamless stop. You know, you know what? He might get ahead of uh, Verstappen here. I know he's a he's a bit of a specialist around Monaco. Is uh is uh Daniel Ricciardo? In fact, here they come. Here we go. There we go. There goes Verstappen. So we've taken the lead. He's, he's has got ahead of the Stappen. Wow! Yeah, there's a turn up for the box. Gap to teammate behind is 17. We're on lap number eight, and seconds. all of a sudden the uh, the race has changed. Oh, bit of a contact with the wall on the outside of Casino Square. But uh, now the race has changed. It is. Oof. So we've got to defend like hell of 13 laps from Daniel Ricciardo, and Ricciardo is OP around Monaco. He is so OP, it is unbelievable. <sighs> it's 
Time to uh, time to cross your fingers, everybody, and uh, hope that uh, the inevitable doesn't happen. Right, the car behind has come in to put on the ultra soft tire. That's the car behind now on the ultra soft. And now through uh, through to back into the swivel. That's uh, that's Charles Leclerc. There, he's a uh, P4. Yeah, he's running P4 on our running sheet. So he's actually just behind this fight. And uh, he is actually our rival, if you uh, remember. So uh, we've got to uh, outperform him to uh, to gain some points on him. He's actually just set the fastest lap of the race. Leclerc uh, has set the fastest is, uh, lap of the race so far. Not surprising, because we're uh, we're holding up a bit of trade at the moment as we come into Casino Square down the hill now to uh, Mirabeau. You want to get some of that drain gully. Well, you used to get a bit of drain gully for a bit of grip, but uh, they've put a big curb there now to stop people uh, doing that. So you naturally now run wide as uh, Fernando Alonso sets the fastest lap. So imagine if he was up here. Imagine if he was up here as we go to one of the Ferraris now. This is that Sebastian. No, that's Kimi Raikkonen. He's P6 at the moment. He's, uh, he's he's just chilling. Look at I'm sorry, I hate those wings on on the halo. Those wings on the halo doesn't look right. Sorry, it just doesn't look right. So we come back to myself here, and uh, we're still chilling in the lead on uh, coming at start lap number ten. Almost halfway through this race already. And uh, you can only imagine the uh, the pain that goes through some of them with all the gear changes around Monaco. It's uh, it's ridiculous. We go back to uh, Sebastian Vettel now. He's P8. So um, they, there's a look at them uh, winglets. Well, they, they actually were winglets on the uh, halo of the uh, Ferrari. Oh my god! As bad goes, that's bad. And we've done some, some bad things as Alonso sets another fastest lap of the race. So imagine if Alonso was up here with us, what he'd be doing right about now. He'd be absolutely on it. And he'd be trying to catch us down. But that's Monaco. You make one mistake and these barriers on either side, they're waiting for us. We go back to Roman Grosjean in P12. He's got uh, Sergio Perez for company. Oh, sorry, that's Esteban Ocon for company. Um, in P13. And there's the swimming pool section. So... Yeah. Now, ah, now! Now it's getting tasty. For the race lead, myself and Daniel Ricciardo. Let's see what uh, Ricciardo... Oh, he made a contact with the wall going up into Massenet. No, that's Mir that is Mirabeau. That's Mirabeau. This is Massenet. I don't know what I'm talking about here. All this, uh, all these corners. Are, you, you think there's so many corners, but there really isn't. It's just how slow. Well, I say slow. You do the lap now in a minute and ten seconds. Which is why uh, people were calling for a change to be made to the circuit as Ricardo gets right close to the back of us into the chicane, but he just can't do anything with it. You've got to be practically side by side and have the perfect momentum run out of Poitiers to, uh, to even get close. And uh, sometimes it's not going to happen. We go over the curves of the, piss the uh, swimming pool into the Rascas, so called for the hotel uh, on the inside, the Rascas Hotel. Out of Anthony Nodes, and uh, he's got DRS coming over the uh, line here. And let's see what happens. This this is where he's strongest, coming up the hill to uh, Mirabeau. In fact, he's gone for it again. You think he hit the wall again? Oof. This it it's going to be so close. This race. We you're probably going to see the top seven or eight, literally seconds apart but this is this is Monaco and that's what uh, excuse me that's what it's all about as we come out of Poitiers into the tunnel for the 11th so the 12th time now we're on lap number 12 <coughs> lap number 12 into the Nouvelle Chicane 
we've got that chicane worked to an absolute pristine masterpiece as we go through to back now into the swimming pool and uh, you, you start to see the train forming here there's me Ricardo Verstappen uh, we've got Leclerc Perez I think uh, you may see one of the Ferraris uh, at the back of the field just don't think there was a Ferrari back there, but there, there is a Ferrari in close proximity. I think it's uh, Kimi Raikkonen. There he is. So, and he'll bring probably Ericsson and Vettel with him. We were on a little wide in Mirabeau. And now through the Casino Square down the hill. Every, every lap that passes is one more lap closer to that, that immortal grave. So, uh, great. We want this victory more than anything at Monaco on Korea. But uh, this man can stop us. Daniel Ricciardo is having another look into the uh, chicane. But, uh, oh, look at that view. With all the ships in the background. Lovely. Utterly lovely as we come through the, uh, through the swimming pool section. Now up to Tabaka again. Sorry, the Raskas. Ooh, little, uh, little lock up there into Raskas, now into Anthony Nogue. He's probably going to have DRS. But like I said, DRS around this place, it's as bad as useful as a chocolate fire guard. You, we need a longer Monaco circuit and we need a better DRS zone because literally DRS here doesn't work. It, it just doesn't. And, and it really hurt hurts me saying that because it is the crown jewel in the F1 calendar but it just needs some better modifications Hamilton said the same to uh, to King, what is it, King Prince Albert sorry of Monaco and let, let's hope he takes it on board because uh, if he doesn't take it on board then uh, We'll just be stuck with the same old Monaco as we uh, see Ricardo having another look in the swimming pool. Well, I think we uh, went a little deep there, so that might give him a bit of a run. You can see the Ferrari has joined the back of the train now. Oof, we are all over the place. He's right on our tail, folks. He's he's not going away. If we're going to beat Daniel Ricardo, we got to absolutely run the next five, six laps of our lives to try and beat him because like I said, he's king around here these Red Bulls are king around this circuit and that's just because of their aero and their chassis that's all it can be put down to as we come through Mirabeau now into Casino Square down the hill you want to veer to the left right a little bit and now into Massenet through into the Lowe's hairpin Slowest corner in F1, the Lowe's hairpin. Now down the hill, through uh, into Poitiers. There we go, now into the tunnel. We could have another look, is Daniel Ricciardo. But he, he just can't get close. And they daren't put DRS in the tunnel. Because it, it's so dangerous. Right, and now... Here's a fight that could get very interesting. This is uh, Fernando Alonso and Stoffel van Dorn. Alonso is now caught up to the back of his teammate. So look at that, the speed that Alonso has. And if only he could get past him and use it. But you can't. This, this was the problem. Uh, now we're going back about 10 or so years now. Uh, David Coulthard got stuck behind an arrows around here for 50 laps. And it ruined his race. You get stuck behind a slower car around here, and you're done. The battery is low on because energy. Because the other car will always get to respond before you around these places. Uh, in fact, it's probably actually Monaco is the worst circuit as far as passing opportunities is concerned. Because because there practically are none. <coughs> Any, the only two real opportunities are out of the tunnel into the Nouvelle Chicane and into Anthony, into Santa Vot. But you've got to be so close to make it happen. And if you're not close, then it's not going to happen. As you see Ricardo having another look. Take that from the point. 
if we can put the car right in the right position, he can't get through. I would love to see more of that helicopter shot, if you uh, don't mind there, Mr. Uh, cameraman. But, oof, five, less than five to go. Coming up for four to go. I, I, I cannot tell you, but, oh, uh, man, Christ. I can hardly speak with, with that, uh, we want this so much. He's going to have another go up the hill into Mirabeau. Here we go. He's, well, actually, he's not even close this time, so... I don't know what's going on there as we... Well, we ran a little wide. Not, not a lot wide, but a little wide. It's uh, downhill out of Casino Square now. Into Massonet. Through Massonet we go. Into the Lowe's hairpin. It... It could kick off any second, folks, as we see... Uh, oh, he's going to have another go. He's, he's got some incredible traction out of Poitiers. In fact, we got it all wrong, Poitiers. So this will put him right on our back bumper. Heading down to the Nouvelle Chicane. But nope, he's not going to get there. <coughs> he's not going to get there at all. So, it's all about just keeping our cool. Because now you've done 17 laps. You've come, you're coming towards the end of the race here. Let's see. Come on. So we're going to get three to go. Three to go in the Monaco Grand Prix. Into Santa Vot we go. And we got Daniel Ricciardo all over our rear wing again. But it, like I said, he cannot get close. He'll try, but he just cannot get close. The, this is the problem with Monaco. It, it's a been a, and it's been a big problem for a while and as I keep going on we need changes to the circuit even, even if it's just a cheeky out of Mirabeau because there's a, a little place going up the hill out of Casino Square and uh, going around and brings you back down towards uh, Massenet even if you put that in that'll do oh he, he was really close there but oh no it's, we keep him back again We are doing enough. That's all we need to do. Enough. And if, oh, oh no, no. You know what I say about mistakes coming in? Well, there was one. Hit the wall slightly on the outside of the swimming pool chicane. And now, and now he's going to be right on our rear wing all the way up this hill. We just put the car right in his racing line. If he wants it, he's got to go the other way. But no, we... Oh, that was... Oh. oh, my God. We nearly ran out of track on lap 19. I wish you could feel my heart rate right now because my heart rate is going through the roof. And uh, I imagine it's going to go even more in a second as we see back on board with Daniel Ricciardo. I'm going to need to take a sip of this, folks. <coughs> That's better. Sip of that through the chicane. And uh, surprisingly, sparks are still flying. Although that could be for the damage to my uh, rear wing as we go into the uh, swim pool chicane. Now... There's one lap to go. Just two miles between myself and my first ever career victory at Monaco. Come on, we can do this. Okay, we need some energy harvesting. Reduce ERS deployment. This is your final lap. Final lap of the race. Just put it where he's going. Oh, little contact with the wall on the way up to Mirabeau. We'll be going through Mirabeau now. Yes, through Mirabeau. Into the Casino Square. Car still feels alright. But we advise Massenet. moving to mix two. He's fuel got to one mix more two. opportunity, and that's into the new Belgian game. But he's got to be Jeff. really, really close out of Poitiers. Let's uh, let's see. Will he get close out of Poitiers? He's practically on our rear wing. Come on, Come on. he's not going to get there. Oh, we nearly made contact with the wall on the outside of the tunnel, and he's not through. He's not through. Oh, we've got this. Come up, we've got this. 
Oh, we have. I think we've got this now. Oh, I think we have. He's not even close into Raskas. Oh, there's a lot of try and a lot of frustration. Oh, we got it. But we got Anthony Nose to go through. The checkered flag is there. Just fantastic. You deserve Victory that at the Monaco win. Grand Prix, baby. About time to. Brilliant stuff from Toro Rosso today. What a superb victory. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. And it's time now for the podium celebrations and how well deserved is this one? This is a team all about giving talented young drivers an opportunity to race and to win. Toro Rosso are your winners here today. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Paul increases their championship lead. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? I think it has to be Sergei Sorokin. You know, good on the tyres, some nice passes. I can't really think of anyone who caught my eye more today. And here's how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. That's it for today's Grand Prix, and from Ant and I, it's goodbye, and see you again next time. <laughs> finally, finally, victory in Korea at Monaco. Finally. Uh, all 20 of us finished well. Ah, oh, my man Gasly only finished 16. That is frustrating. They gave Sergei Sorokin driver of the day. And I'm wondering what he did to uh, deserve that one. But my god, thank you very, very, very much. The victory around Monaco. And what's the betting when we go see Claire right about now? That's going to be her first question. Doesn't get much better than the victory around Monaco, does it? Hell no. Made it look easy. Hey, you started without me. How are you feeling after that win? How do how do you think it feels? Absolutely fucking amazing. That's how it feels, but let's pay tribute to the aero department there. Another podium. You must be getting used to it up there. In this Toro Rosso, do you really think we were expecting podiums? Do you really think it Your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing. Do it for the smiles on their faces, man. The smiles on their faces. But we're glad. It wasn't the we just. Uh, yesterday, was it? Screw you! We're not answering that question. Oh, well, we answer it with that one instead. Great. Well, that's everything. Ah, no problem there, Claire. Yeah. Show me the money. Show me the money, man. Victory around Monaco. I still can't get over that man. Still can't look. You, you're gonna, you are gonna see me still smiling like this at, at the start of the Canadian Grand Prix. Cause I'm gonna be like this. We won around Monaco, man. We won around Monaco, and we got 600 more resource points to play with. So let's go and get some engine upgrades for Canada, shall we? Well done. Keep pushing like this for the rest of the season. Because I think that's, uh, I think that's what we need. We you hit your need last team goal. power. Well done. That should get the team a nice boost to their development, and it won't hurt when it comes to your next contract for you either. Oh, let's have a look then. So we've got ninety eleven and oh, mind you, you know what? 
Yeah, let's, uh, can we, have we enough now to do uh, an aero upgrade? No. What are we, oh, we're five short, man. That's, that sucks. I bet we can't even get this power upgrade, can we? Can we? Oh, no. Oh, well. Looks like we're only taking a few things then to, uh, to Canada. None of it what uh, what we want, but look at that. See, look at this. Season 3, third, second, and then we finished practically last on uh, our first try. First ever career victory around Monaco. Didn't do it in any of the other F1 games prior on the PS4, but we did it on here. Thank you very much. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, f four seasons it took us, but finally we got the victory around Monaco. The victory that we wanted so much. Uh, but that's going to do it. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you uh, hope you did enjoy the Monaco Grand Prix. Uh, I know I didn't for about 20 laps, and then uh, as we crossed the line, we did enjoy it. Uh, but until next video from uh, Canada, it's thank you very much for watching. Uh, leave a like if you liked this as much as I liked it. Uh, and until next time... Uh, we shall see you around the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Take care, everyone.